Hello world and fellow humans. I'm going to take a little time to talk about stress. Obviously, I think we're all under a lot of that because of the uncertainty in the world today and what's going to happen from one moment to the next. And when you discover neuroscience and how the brain reacts to stress, you discover that Nothing is more stressful to the human brain than uncertainty, the not knowing of what's coming, because the brain is predictive in nature, which means it really likes to know what's coming next. And when it doesn't, it really freaks out. And you got to remember that stress in and of itself isn't a bad thing. I mean, we need stress because that's how we become harder, faster, stronger, longer, hashtag monster mode. It's just the incessant stress that's always there. But the beautiful thing about being humans uh, are that we can uh, choose how we respond to stress. And the key word is the response, not the react part. So I'm going to go over something I teach in some of my courses with people who have chronic pain from stress. And this, of course, is adding to that. And what you'll find is that probably uh, you may have some exacerbations of old injuries that are coming up now uh, in the past because the stress will uh, put a lot of stress on your immune system and your nervous system and things may start to creep out that you've had in the past. So it's more important than ever that we roll into that. So there's a term that I learned from Dr. John Sarno. And he's the early pioneer of talking about the role of emotion in chronic low back pain. And I happen to love his work. And he had a term in there called TMS, which stands for Tension Myoneural Syndrome. Basically, what that means is that stress causes excess tension, tightness, and stiffness. And the simple way to look at it is this. Tight tissue doesn't accept blood flow well. And then decreased blood flow means you have a decrease in the delivery of oxygen to tissues, and that's a condition known as hypoxia. But really what happens is your tissues begin to starve of oxygen and they starve of nutrients, which means they're going to really struggle to regenerate and heal because they just can't get the fundamental ingredients to heal. It's like if you want to make a cake, you need the ingredients to do it. And with this excess tension and stress, the myo means muscle, neuro means nerve, the muscle and the nerve are going to starve of oxygen. And we know that nerves need oxygen and glucose. If they don't get it, then they get a little upset. And when nerves get upset, they let you know that by sending you a lot of pain. And the interesting thing is, is that tension myoneural syndrome is mostly limbic system driven. Uh, that means the role of emotion. So our emotions can get the best of us or the worst of us, right? And so let me go over a little bit about the limbic system, the different parts of it. You've got your hippocampus that plays an important role in emotions, learning, and memory. And your amygdala, which also plays a role in uh, aggression and emotion. And the uh, hypothalamus, right? And that's part of that stress axis, the hypothalamic pituitary axis, big mouthful there, the HPA axis. That's kind of the stress response. And I want you to look at that here. It monitors blood levels of glucose. And what did I say that nerves need? They need oxygen and they need glucose. So with human beings, we always will react to something initially as a limbic-driven survival, fight, flight, freeze, freak out, just don't die today response. But then we have the unique capability of using the front of the brain in order to control the back of the brain. And then that comes down to choice. So we need to expect that when we're under these stressful times, it's going to happen, but we have to take back control of that Otherwise, all the chemicals in your body are just going to go a little bit crazy. So I'm going to go over some tactics, some tension myoneural syndrome tactics. Simple things, like 10 things that you can try. Some of them you might already be doing, 
or you know that you should be doing, but you just haven't done it. And now is the time that you want to start these and just begin one at a time and tiptoe your way in. Because I always tell people that the basics and the fundamentals make you strong and resilient. And the solution doesn't have to be complicated to work. So number one, uh, lie down on the ground in different positions to offload the nervous system and add what we call low threshold novelty. So let me break this down. First of all, you're going to go down to the ground, which is a new environment that you're probably not used to. And then I want you to lie in different positions because it's different. Novelty means different. And your brain needs to have stimulation. So it needs oxygen, glucose, and stimulation. And it likes when you do different stuff. It's very easy to fall into a rut. And offload means this, is that it takes a lot of your brain and your nervous system and everything to work to keep you standing up and walking around and moving on two feet. Low threshold means that if you lie down on the ground and you just start to move down there, it's easier on your nervous system. It's not throwing a ton of it at one time and you can work your way up to standing high intensity motions. And when you get down on the ground, just do different things. Maybe you can rock back and forth. You can roll over in different directions and that's going to stimulate your vestibular system, which is the inner ear imbalance system of the body, which can help decrease stress as well. So just go down to the ground and do something down there. Better yet, do it with somebody that you may be housebound with. Uh, breathe via your nose instead of your mouth, which will increase nitric oxide delivery and increase vasodilation. When you breathe through your nose, you're going to send more oxygen to the lower one-third of your lungs, where most of your red blood cells actually sit and are manufactured, so you get better oxygen delivery to the tissues, and you vasodilate, which means you expand the blood vessels so they can accept more blood flow. And breathing through your nose moves your diaphragm, which helps move all the fluid in your body. Brush your face, your hands, your feet with a painter's brush. So get like a brush or a toothbrush and go over all of your face and your hands and your feet. And the reason we do that is because those are big areas that your brain uses for sensory input in order to help it determine its predictive output. So if you want to help prediction, you help input. And no better way to do that than a soft painter's brush because you're going to stimulate some of these nerve fibers that can relax you and put you into a nice, cool state, and plus, plus it's, it's fun. Um, close your eyes and visualize yourself floating in water or, you know, kind of being raised up in a hot air balloon. The idea is to use the power of visualization, which is unique to, to man, and uh, put yourself into a relaxed state, and water does that quite nicely. Um, so just visualize that, or I got a better idea. Why don't you just jump in and take a nice bath? Uh, rub your ears, which relaxes the entire body. Then when you rub your ears, you'll notice the whole body begins to relax. That ties into a discipline called auriculotherapy, where you can stimulate the ear to, to begin to affect neurologically the entire body. That's a lot that they do in acupuncture and acupressure. And it just feels really freaking good. Um, smile. There's a good one. If you smile... You'll probably notice that uh, a lot of your nervous system will relax because you stimulate all the cranial nerves or facial nerves in your body, and then you begin to feel better. And in the beginning, you might have to fake it till you make it. Be kind to someone. That speaks for itself, starting with yourself, starting with people that you're spending time with, but also out in the world when they're under so much stress. This is a time when we need each other more than ever um, as, a healing, as a healing planet. Listen to music and sing. Great way to stimulate the parasympathetic, relax, wind, dine, feed, breed system of the body. Put your favorite tunes on and do it. I'm rocking out to the 80s music. You can bet your ass on that one. Uh, effective touch, which means uh, therapeutic touch, right? Uh, cuddle. Cuddle with someone. Uh, humans are designed to uh, touch each other and communicate through touch. Uh, you see other species do it all the time, particularly monkeys. And the other one is a uh, heart hug another human. Usually when you hug someone, we usually will uh, go towards the left side of the body. That means when you hug, your head will usually go to their left. So now I want you to switch it around and you hug so your heart touches their heart. So basically, 
if the right sides uh, that, that are going to be, um, excuse me, the left side of the that's going to hug. So the heart sits on the left side, right? So you're going to hug and put the heart to heart when you do it. It's going to feel a little weird because your brain is so used to going the other way. But there's a massive energetic connection when you do a heart to heart hug. I got that from my good friend David Whitley, the Iron Tamer. And the heart has a significant amount of energy to it. And you'll tap into some of the heart chakra, sternum, chest movement. Because we all need a little bit more of heart, love, and connection. So give those guys a shot. It's pretty damn cool. Pretty damn simple. You can get more info and look at some of our other stuff on stopchasingpain.com. All of my other ways that you can watch things on uh, Instagram and my podcast. And I just want to let you know I've got some online webcasting coming on up for people that are not able to travel. But we also have a ton of online content with our membership site that's been up for several years. And I've got over 900 videos, I think, at this moment in time that can keep you busy and keep you learning in multiple different ways that you can continue to fire up your brain and learn how to be better at what you love to do. So when the world hits the reset button again and we all get some healing inside, we come out better on the other side. Thanks so much, guys, for tuning on in. Much love. Stay safe. Stay strong. Stay positive. Reach out if you ever need anything. I'm always here.